Hey, Cameron, if you're set, give us a thumbs up. I'm good to go. Great. Congratulations on the win. Thanks so much for joining us yeah, here. Thank you. And everyone, thanks again for participating today in this Loyola Ramblers post-game press conference. We're now joined by Loyola Senior Center Cameron Crutwig. And media members, don't forget, use the raised hand function to indicate if you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on, be sure to state your name and affiliation first. And our first question will come from Mike Berman with NBC5 Chicago. Mike, you can unmute yourself and then go ahead to ask your question. Rock, congratulations on an outstanding performance. Hey, thank you, thank you. As as the uh, as the time was ticking away, what uh, and you guys started to celebrate and it sunk in. What were you guys feeling? Just a just a relief, you know. We worked so hard every all year um, to get to this point to make the tournament to uh, you know compete against the best. If you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And uh, you know they're they're a really really good team. And and we came out and we we uh, we just executed and, and played our game and, and kind of controlled the game from the start. And uh, it, we just we just stuck to the game plan. Really, uh, there was, no one was doing anything, you know, out of, out of their body, out of their mind. You know, we were just stuck to the game plan. What coach coach drew up in the huddle and stuff, and um, just a great sense of relief. And and to be do it with these guys, especially throughout this whole year, just w with COVID and everything, no fans and, and everything like that. Just just a special moment. Okay, Mike. Thank you for your question. Moving on now, our next question will come from Krista with CBS Chicago. Krista, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Cam. Congratulations. Hey, thank uh, you. You've obviously been to the Final Four. Where does this win rank in, uh, in your yeah. career so far? I mean, it it's it's special because it's the it's the next one. You know, it, it's it's super special, especially with like I said before with the COVID and, and everything. I mean, this year has been a roller coaster. Um, you know, from canceling games to no fans to not even knowing if we're going to have a season. You know, last last May it was it was pretty uh, pretty dark, pretty bleak. You know, we didn't know if we we're going to have a season or anything. So, um, you know, that that Final Four run and everything will hold a hold a special place in my heart, obviously. But but this one feels specialer and, and sweeter in the moment because I'm because I'm here because I'm in the present right now. But, uh, you know, when I look back on it, you know, they'll, they'll all be great memories. And, and spell, celebrating on the floor with the team out there, you, you can't beat that. So I'm excited. But uh, like we said last round, we got more work to do. So uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to go ahead, get back to the drawing board. You know, we're going to enjoy it for sure. But uh, at some point, you know, it's going to end, and, and we gotta, we got to focus on the next team. Okay, thanks for your question there, Krista. Moving along, our next question will come from Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Pete, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Cam, congratulations on the uh, on the win. Obviously, Thank you. Uh, the hallmark of this team has been its defense. Uh, can you give me a sense or maybe a moment of when you knew you had them frustrated? They started complaining to the refs. They looked a little bit rattled. And, and the way you guys play with the deliberate offense and then, you know, coming back and the way you guard. Can you just give me a sense of how that all culminated today and, and when you kind of knew you might have had them a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we knew they wanted to push the pace. Um, they're, they're one of the best teams in transition in the, in the whole country. Um, so it wasn't that the game plan was, hey, we want to slow it down as much as we can. We wanted to be opportunistic with running and, and stuff like we always are. But, um, you know, when they, when they couldn't get out and run and couldn't, you know, find the gaps in, in transition, maybe that frustrated them a little bit. But, uh, you know, you're not going to take everything away from them. You know, you, you, they're, they're one of the best teams in the country. So you, you're going to have to just pick and choose what you want to take away. And, um, you know, we did a good job in the ball screen defense. You know, they caught us a couple of times. But... Um, you just got to stay strong and, and stay stay with it. And if they score, they score. And, um, you know, at the end of the game, we, we just executed our plays and, and things like that, and um, we, we got the win. Okay, thanks for your question there, Pete. Next up, we'll turn to WGN's Andy Mazur. Andy, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Cam, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Um, just describe what that matchup was like between you and, and Kofi underneath. And I know you were trying to bring him out a little bit. Was that part of the game plan? Yeah, uh, I, I, a lot of respect to him. Um, he, he's 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 super physical, super big. I mean, 
it's tough to get around him. Um, yeah, I don't know if that – I mean, we just ran our stuff, and, and he was kind of letting me get catches. He wasn't – I mean, he wasn't really guarding me outside of three, so I just kind of took up the slack to him and, and made some moves, you know, some moves that I want back. I uh, missed a couple – couple easy ones that I that I thought should have went in but um, you know just a lot of respect I mean he, he works so hard to seal you in there seal you deep um, you know he, he finishes everything around the rim lob dunks stuff like that but uh, you know it, it, it tests me on defense tests me on offense I mean going through he's like a brick wall you know going through him and scoring it w was a tough task so um, just a lot of respect to him and, and his game and um, you know their game plan was to, was to sag off and, and kind of let me um, kind of play at my own pace, so I, I took it and did what I wanted with it. So that 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 was kind of what I was seeing out there. Okay, thank you, Andy. Next up, we'll turn to Paul Sullivan from the Chicago Tribune. Paul, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Uh, hey, Cameron, congrats. Hey, thank uh, you. You know, last time it was considered kind of a Cinderella story, but uh, now I think people are starting to believe in you a little bit more and you see all these upsets in the tournament. Uh, do you guys feel like uh, it's, it's a different story now and that you actually can win this whole thing? I mean, yeah, it's definitely a different story. I mean, we, we came in this tournament, you know, ranked like 17th in the country for in the, in the AP poll, you know. Uh, we got an eight seed. Uh, that's just a hand we were dealt. And, um, you know, we, we feel like we're one of the best teams in the country. And, and I think we showed that these last two games, um, definitely with the, with the contrasting styles. You know, Georgia Tech played a ton, pretty much played all zone, um, you know, tried to, tried to force us to make outside shots, whereas Illinois was, you know, physical, making, making us uh, run our man sets and stuff. So, you know, that's a great thing about us. We can adapt to any style of play, really. And, um, you know, you can't not think that you're one of the best teams in the country. You know, you got, you got to think that and you got to play like it. And, um, you know, we're excited to get to the next one. Um, you know, I've been here before. Lucas has been here before. Um, here was a red shirt when, when we went to the Final Four. So we've got some experienced guys. And, um, you know, in times, you know, NCAA tournament, it's all about runs. You know, it's all about a, a game of basketball is about a, is a game of runs. And, uh, you know, I thought that we answered a lot of their runs. You know, Georgia Tech came out and, and put it on us in the first couple minutes of the game. We came out, settled in, and, and the same thing today. Um, you know, Illinois w was trying to scrap and claw and fight back into the game, and, and we answered that too. So, um, you know, yeah, definitely. We definitely think we're one of the best teams in the country. But, um, you know, you got to back it up with your play. Okay, thank you, Paul. Next up, Nancy Armour with USA Today Sports. Nancy, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Hey, Cameron, congratulations. Hey, thank kind you. of follow, following up on, on that last question, you, yeah, you have a couple guys who are left over from 2018, but the majority of your team, this is all new to them. How have you and Lucas in particular, you know, kind of managed to, to educate or, or get guys in the right frame of mind for the tournament? And do you think that that's been accomplished now or, or is there still, are you still gonna have to be talking them through that in the, you know, over the next week? Yeah, I mean, as you go on and as you get deeper and deeper, you know, the the, the media, the, your friends, your family, you know, it, it's going to get all, all up another level. You know, a lot of people are going to be hitting you up saying, hey, congrats, all this stuff. But you just got to try to find that balance between, you know, having a confidence in yourself, uh, a respectful confidence for your opponent that you're playing, and, um, you know, just knowing that, hey, we're, we're here, we're ready to do this. So... I think that's one thing Coach has, has really done well with us and, and given us that confidence to go out and, and play and, and beat anybody. And, um, you know, that's just – it starts with me and Lucas and the seniors uh, just telling these young guys, like, hey, we, we can do this. You know, you got to believe in it. And um, another big thing is, is um, no one uh, picking your battles. And I've said this before. You know, NCAA tournament, you want to you want to enjoy it, man. You really want to enjoy it and hype and and be hype and uh, you know enjoy the time off the floor with the teammates and everything, and be loose and, and be fun and everything. But when it's time to lock in, when it's time to get on the court, you know we only have hour and, and a half, hour and fifty minutes on the court each day. When it's time to watch film or anything like that, you got to lock in and be ready because you know the, you don't get a lot of that time, especially now with with everything being so scheduled and the cleaning and and everything that needs to go on. You really got a limited window to to get get work done, so you got to lock in, and, and I think we've we've really struck that balance really well. Thank you, Nancy. Our final question will come from Pat Forty with Sports Illustrated. Pat, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. 
Uh, Cameron, congratulations. Just Thank wanted you. to ask you about the defensive game plan, trying to kind of squeeze Io when he went at the ball, and then also swarming Kofi when the ball went into him. Just how did you guys get that implemented in two days? Yeah. Oh, it's been a whole season of that, man. That, that's our defense. Um, you know, and Coach said that today. It's, it's not just a 48-hour scout. You know, we've been working our whole whole season for this, working our whole season on our defense. I mean. I, I guess people kind of forgot or, or, or something, but we were the number one defense in the country this year. Um, you know, I guess people chalk it up to maybe net pl being a mid-major or something, but I mean, we play hard, play the right way, and we, we follow the scout and follow the scheme. And uh, yeah, like you said, we, we were icing uh, Io and, and some of the other guys. And, um, you know, they faced Drexel the other day, um, and they were in the low ice, which is, uh, you know, not as much pressure. We, we, we kind of put the high ice on them. And, um, you know, force him to throw that skip. And then, you know, when Kofi got it down there, you know, uh, you're not going to hold him catchless. You know, he's going to catch, he's going to catch a bunch of, bunch of, you know, lob passes and stuff. So when he got it, we just tried to swarm him. And, um, you know, the game plan worked out. And credit to the coaches, man. Those guys stay up late night, 3, 3, 4 a.m., working on stuff. And, um, you know, we follow it. So um, it, it's not been a 48 hour thing, it's been a whole, whole year. Cameron, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations right. again. Best of luck in the Sweet 16. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. We'll be joined momentarily by Loyola head coach Porter Moser. At this time, all hands will be lowered. So looking ahead, if you have a question for Coach Moser, we will ask you to raise your hand again. Porter, welcome. If you're set, give us a thumbs up. Terrific. Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on the phenomenal win today. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Moser and then go to your questions when we do. Again, use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask one. And when you're called on, make sure to state your name and media affiliation first for Coach Moser to know who he's talking with. Uh, and, and Coach, before we go to questions, please give us a brief opening statement. I first want to thank God for giving us our program this moment, for allowing me to coach these young men and putting us in this moment right now. Um, so secondly, I, uh, you know, the, the guys believed. I, I said this, I've said this before uh, as the coach of Loyola. It's amazing what happens when you get a group of young men who believe. And these guys believed. And, um, you know, from start to finish, uh, but even it wasn't just the last 48 hours. A lot of the stuff we've done is, is hard work in the summer, Hard work in the off season. This just wasn't something we, the flips just switched these last 48 hours. These guys have invested in, 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 in what we do and then they believe in it. And uh, just great group of guys that believe and coaches. My assistants are phenomenal. Fantastic. We'll go to questions from the media now. And media, you can use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. Our first question comes from Mike. Berman with NBC5 Chicago. Mike, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Porter, congrats. Outstanding performance. When you think about how you drew it up and you wanted it to go, how almost exactly did it play out? Well, I, I think our guys did a great job. I mean, we really wanted to control the transition defense and their ball screen offense. Um, just so much respect for each one of their players. Um, you know, offensively, we spaced it, we moved it. We, we needed to have high assists, low turnovers. Uh, we had 16 assists, 11 turnovers against their pressure defense. I mean, they're fifth in the country defensively as well. So, um, but uh, the, guys, the guys were locked in. Uh, we're enjoying each other when it's time to enjoy each other, but they were locked in, and I thought, um, I thought they did a really good job in transition defense and in ball screen defense. Hey, thanks for your question, Mike. Next up, we will turn to Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. Dana, you can go ahead to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Porter, congratulations. Um, 
it, it looked like at the end of the game there, uh, you, somebody, I don't know if it was you, or called everybody back on the court after they had kind of exited to go to the locker room. What was that all about? Just to enjoy the moment. I've been here before, and, like, with no fan, there were, we were fans there, but, I mean, last time when we were going to Sweet 16, I, they just – uh, I felt like against Georgia Tech, we just took off. I always tell them, let's enjoy the moment. Enjoy that win. So Crudwig was doing a live interview, and I'm like, go stand behind him. Go stand behind him. We're all part of this thing. And then when I was doing up, I told him to stand behind me. I wanted them to enjoy that moment. Our fans were still there. We haven't had fans all year. And they, were, they didn't want to leave. I mean, security was going to have to make them leave, but they were still there. And I wanted them to stay out and enjoy it because that etches in your memory, you know, that, that moment right there and feeling all the work you put in all the, uh, the effort you do to stay together, the sacrifices you make, that we've, especially this year, the sacrifices we made this year. I just didn't want to rush in the locker room. Stay out there, enjoy it. Stand behind Crutwig. Crutwig would be the first one to say it's a team thing with our program. And um, I wanted to, that was behind it, Dana. I wanted everyone to enjoy that moment a little longer with the fans. Okay, thanks for your question, Dana. Next up, we will turn to CBS Chicago's Krista. Krista, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Hi, Porter. Congratulations. Um, I know you're focused on the game and everything that took place, but from a bigger picture, what does this mean for the program and to knock off the big state school, the number one seed? You know, just thinking back where, the, where we came from, you know, 10 years ago to moving up into the Missouri Valley and then, you know, the, the last six years. And just I kept on saying, I go, you know, I just feel like this has a high ceiling and uh, what you can do when you get a group people believe in. But, um, you know, to see the excitement, I, I was told this a lot when I took the job 10 years ago. And it's, they said, it's a pro town. It's a pro town. And I said, I'm from here. I said, it's a sports town. It's a sports town. They love their sports. And watching the passionate uh, fan base with Illinois and what they've done all year, it's great to see the programs here get excited about it and to see Chicago get behind our team. You know, they've embraced us for years now. Um, and it means a lot. You want it to be relevant. You want to, be, you want to have the, the excitement. And uh, basketball is very rich traditions in Chicago and the state of Illinois. And I thought today you saw two ranked teams go at it. And, uh, but it means a lot for Loyola, where we were to where we are now, and we're not done. So it means a lot. Thanks for your question, Krista. Next up, we will go to Paul Sullivan from the Chicago Tribune. Paul, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Uh, thank you, Coach. I think everyone uh, at this point knows about Cam and uh, Lucas, but uh, could you talk about the efforts of uh, Kennedy and, and uh, Braden tonight? Man, Mar Ken Marquise Kennedy, another Chicago guy. He was, uh, he was so big tonight. You know, he's so elusive with the dribble. He created some things off the dribble. He hit a big three. He got fouled on. Um, he had a really tough basket in a in a time where he was kind of locked up, tough. Not, I don't think anybody on our team can make that. Marquise can. Marquise is one of those guys that can make something out of nothing. And he was kind of locked up on the baseline, pivoted, 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 and just turned and jumped over and made a basket. Um, he can do those things. Took it to the basket quick in transition, but I thought he was really good. Um, Braden Norris, so tough. I mean, I don't even think we took him out, um, and he'd be mad at me if I took him out. He just, he's, you trust him. I've said this for not just this tournament all year. You trust him at that point guard spot. He's tougher than nails. Um, but we had contributions all over the map, and um, um, it's just a team. It's a lot of guys contributing. Hey, thanks for your question, Paul. Next, Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Pete, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Uh, congratulations, Porter. Uh, you know, the, the common fan uh, who saw you in 2018 is going to link back to that team when, when they see, you know, a game like today. I'm curious how that run built into this run and what traits this team has to maybe keep this run going. So we have two players left from that team, Mark, uh, Cameron Crowley and Lucas Williamson. So having the older guys that have been there, because sometimes when a coach is talking about it, it's a little more impressive and more, you know, it resonates more when their peers say it. But, uh, you know, the similarities are it's just a group of guys believing and uh, playing for each other. And, um, you know, they, they listen, they lock in, they execute, they defend. And those are, those are similarities. Um, you know, they, you know, I, I, they don't believe what all the outside noise is. You know, we control what we can control. And um, I think that that's a similarity. But, um, 
you know, just excited how much these guys invested in the two staples that, you know, part of it was we had guys like Dante Ingram, Ben Richardson, Marcus Towns, um, uh, Clay Custer, Andre Jackson, those guys, they poured into the young guys like Cameron and Lucas. And now it's, it's the older guys pouring into the Marquise Kennedy, the Braden Norris's. And that's how it works, the Jacob Hudson's. Is you gotta, if you're going to sustain a program, you've got to get your older guys pouring into the younger ones because you need everybody's help. You know, just like they needed Lucas then. I mean, Hudson came off and had two big baskets. All right, Marquise Kennedy came off the bench, had 14 points. So they know, the seniors know, hey, we need – it just can't be two guys to get to this level. And uh, that's what I love about our program right now is you got older guys pouring into the younger guys, and we're just sustaining it. Okay, thank you, Pete. Next, Andy Mazur with WGN in Chicago. Andy, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Porter, congrats on the win. Um, Thanks, I'm just curious, what does it say about the character of your, your team? I mean, you knew that Illinois was going to try to make a run back at you guys, and you guys had that wherewithal to answer every one of them. So one is, I mean, we all watched Illinois. Actually, we were waiting for Selection Sunday watching Illinois play Ohio State. And just a, a lot of respect for them. I mean, they're really good. And, but that's part of it is it's a, just to believe and you can do it. And we've, we talk a lot of times other teams are going to make a run. And 40 minutes is not going to all go your way. You're going to have runs against it. And we knew, I mean, they're really good. They're not going to quit and not come back. They kept on trying to come back. Um, but we've been there before. We've been there before, and you just got to stay with it. Next possession. You know, you get a dunk, Kofi had a dunk, next possession. And, and you got to have that mentality, um, and, and when, especially when to this stage, because everyone's so good um, at this level. So I think, it, you know, the resiliency, um, their togetherness, not to let it and, and not to get any panic um, from our end on the bench as coaches. So um, the guys, the guys believed, I'm telling you, they, they believed from start. Even seeing, I mean, and I, we always talk about it, having a confident respect utmost respect for all of them, what they did, but you got to have a confidence that you can beat them. And I, I just saw that confident respect because we've seen them so much do so well on TV. And um, the guys, the guys had that res confident respect to beat them. Thanks for your question, Andy. Next, we'll go to Nancy Armour with USA Today Sports. Nancy, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Congratulations, Porter. Thank you. Um, I'm curious what you learned in 2018 um, that has helped you on this run and, and that's going to help you the deeper that you guys get. And I'm also wondering, too, with some of the upsets that we've already seen, does this kind of feel like a tournament that's built for a team like Loyola? You know, for your, for your first part, what did I learn? Um, I learned so much. You know, I, I said this last time. I learned this last time, and it's just continuing to validate it, is when you're young, you know, whatever field you're in, you know, when you're young, you're so much about the trajectory. You're focusing on, I got to win. I got to get to this level. I got to make this much money. I got to get here. I got to get here. And you're never happy. And you do that. You don't enjoy the journey. And I just was so in the moment of enjoying the journey these last five, six years, the people I'm with and being happy. And then success comes then. And, and I just, uh, the journey of, of, you know, enjoying each moment with these guys and the practice and the, the game planning and the games. And it helps you not become so tight when you're focused on those things. And, you know, also as a head coach, you know, we had a lot of guys that we had last time we didn't have anybody that was on that stage. And it was just so important that that for our coaching staff that understand that it's a big stage. Can't get them so tight. You got to enjoy the moment. Enjoy. So we were always talking about off when we're out hanging out with each other in the rooms and the pregame meals or whatever it's time to enjoy each other enjoy it but these guys when it's film walking through the ballroom practice they are locked in and that's what's special about this group and i'm um, feeling the same way about that um with this group and continue to learn that and be blessed with enjoying the moment nancy what was the second part of your question Sorry, Porter, we actually uh, lost oh. Nancy on the line there. Darn it. Time she for asked me couple. one. She asked me uh, the second part. I just couldn't remember it. I'm so sorry, Nancy. Call me. <laughs> Nancy, you can you can chime in if you, if you want to follow up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, with some of the upsets that we've seen already oh, yeah. in this tournament, yeah. um, wondering if it, if it kind of feels like a, a tournament that's built for a team like Loyola. You know what? This is all honesty. I literally, last time, it was all about what was right in front of us. I'm not really looking at the, the rest of the brackets. I mean, obviously, I see it. I'm a fan. I'm watching in there. But I'm not thinking strategically, I hope this team wins. I hope this does. This means that. The only thing we were, we were locked in on was Georgia Tech. Then we beat them, and then all we were Illinois. Um, we enjoy this. Then it's going to be the, the winner of the next game. And uh, so I don't think you look at 
the, at least we don't, look at the strategic part of this and the, this guy upset, that means it's going to happen for us. There's reasons why teams win and why they lose, and we, we've got to make those reasons happen next round. And finally, Pat Forty with Sports Illustrated. Pat, go ahead. Yeah, Porter, I just wanted to ask you about the way your team executed the defensive game plan, um, you know, especially the, you know, squeezing I.O. and then swarming on Kofi and, and just how well Crutwig did helping in both of those areas. Man, Crut, Crut uh, he knows it. I hold him to such a high standard. I mean, he'll, mm-hmm. he'll make six great plays in a row, and he'll mess up on one, and I'm, I'm about to lose my mind. He's like, he always looks at me, the coach, just settle down, okay. He's, but his defense has improved so much. But he was he. But I think the reason why his defense is good is because he's got a mental motor. You know, he thinks he, he thinks he he sees it starting to come and develop, and then he he move, he's he's ahead of the play. And I thought his defense on ball screens and his defense in the post was was really was excellent. Was excellent. Um, and he, you know, sometimes he gets his body weight going forward with his head. He had his head back. He was moving, um, talking. I thought he had a great defensive game today, and he was a you know. A huge assignment. You're sitting here saying, all right, Crut, you've got a ball screen D against Io, an All-American, but then you've got a post D against Kofi, an All-American in the post. Have at it, big boy. And, man, he was, he was, I thought he was very, very good defensively as well against elite players. Those are terrific players. And I want to say this one thing about Curbelo, too. He's outstanding in ball screens. And Frazier, like I said this before, the thing, this is, they have a lot of good players, but Curbelo is very hard to bottle up in the ball screens, too. So I thought he did a good job there. Well, Porter, thank you so much for right. your time. Really thank appreciate you. it. Congratulations again. Best of luck moving on in the Sweet 16. Thank you. And that's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of Coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. All right, thank you for participating today. We'll now begin with an opening statement from head coach Brad Underwood, then go to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Well, tremendous amount of credit goes to Loyola. Um, First 10 minutes of that game, they got us on our heels and uh, we never really recovered. Uh, you know, we had stretches, but um, uh, they uh, just rocked us. Um, and, and again, it was we missed some easy opportunities. Uh, we're not going to win many games when Trent's one for ten, and and uh, you know, Io had had a tough night. So, but again, I, I don't want to d- detract anything from Loyola. Uh, they made it very tough for us to run stuff. We got out rebounded. We got out fought. Um, and uh, you know that's a that's a good basketball team. Crutwig is uh, outstanding, tremendous matchup. He dominated the game, uh, you know, with 19 points, five assists, and and 12 rebounds. And um, you know he was he was a he's a difficult matchup and uh, an awfully good player who makes uh, everybody else better. But uh, uh, give them credit; they were the best team today. And uh, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, downplay the outstanding season that that uh, we had. Uh, I want our guys to be um, uh, learn from this experience. We we did a lot of great things in in the best conference in basketball. Today just wasn't our day, and uh, we'll grow from that. All right, now we'll go to questions from the media. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. Um, our first question comes from Shannon Ryan from the Chicago Tribune. Go ahead, Shannon. Okay, thanks. Thanks for. Us. Uh, can you describe just a little the post-game message, um, what that locker room was like, and sending off some really good players here at the end? 
Yeah, you know, they're, play, they're players that, uh, you know, the, the hardest thing about making the NCAA tournament is when you lose is the locker room. And, uh, it, you know, it's family. You see a lot of guys hurting, a lot of guys in tears, um, you know, a lot of guys uh, disappointed. And uh, yet uh, uh, such is life. life. Life deals you some very challenging blows at different times, and, and, and you, you, you've got to wake up in the morning, the sun comes up, and, and you've got to go about your business. And uh, today was not our day. Um, and uh, uh, yet uh, where Illinois basketball was four years ago uh, compared to where it is now, um, I, I like uh, – I like where we're at. I like our young guys. I like our pieces, and and um, you know we've just got to continue to work and uh, and and stay at this level. Our next question comes from Scott Ritchie from the Champaign News Gazette. Go ahead, Scott. So, Brad, you mentioned just you know, loyal, you know, rocking your team. Just what what didn't maybe allow the answer that you guys have typically had when teams have maybe delivered a blow like that before? Can you repeat that again, Scott? Yeah, um, just in terms of Loyola kind of rocking you guys early, what do you feel like maybe was missing where you weren't able to answer that in the way you have you know, before? Well, they did a really good job in their ball screen coverage. And, and uh, again, with a veteran team, uh, Porter's able to do a lot of different things. I, I, we didn't expect them to, to play a deep ball screen coverage, which uh, uh, they had done a lot. And they got up and uh, – uh, you know, really did a good job of, of boxing us in. Um, and we didn't do a very good job of playing out of it. We had some two or three, four turnovers real early. Uh, and again, you know, we said this was a team that was very much like a, 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 an Indiana team we faced defensively. And uh, we didn't handle it very well. And um, again, give them credit. Our next question is from Brandon Simber from the Daily uh, Illini. Go ahead, Brandon. Brad, what they do so well on Iowa defensively? Guarded him. I mean, they you know they they got up into ball screens very hard and and uh, um, you know were very very aggressive in him and 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 made him and made him made him pass the ball or, or try to pass the ball. Uh, you know, he got downhill a few times and missed a couple of easy ones early, but uh, you know again it's. Uh, um, you know, it was it was a tough night. You know, Io doesn't have six turnovers very often, and and uh, um, you know they made it made it tough for him to get to the rim. Brett from WCIA TV, go ahead, Brett. Brett, what adjustments did you try to make, and how come you didn't feel like those worked? Yeah, we put everybody in them. Um, you know, we we tried putting Io and shakes to get him going. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, we tried establishing Kofi. Uh, we didn't go early enough to Kofi. Uh, I thought we missed him, and, and uh, uh, when we did go to him early, he missed three or four. But, um, I, you know, we tried everything in the bag. Everything that's been made us one of the most efficient offensive teams today, just for whatever reason, didn't work. And, you know, Trent goes one for ten, and he's been playing great. And, uh, you know, it was um, – but, but you can't turn it over 17 times. Uh, in an NCAA tournament game against a good team and expect to win. And that and turnovers were the undoing. Next question is from Derek Piper from the Inquirer. Go ahead, Derek. Hey, Coach, what did you see go wrong in your ball screen coverage where Crutwick was able to get um, many opportunities in the pick and roll? No, I, you know, they do a lot of what we call Zoom action. They bring a lot of guys off handoffs, and it's the same thing that we've done uh, all year. And, uh, you know, Crutwig is we, – we try to make it uh, – uh, you know, a two-on-two -two game. Uh, you know, and Crutwig hurt us with a little bit of the, you know, with, with a couple rolls. I'm okay with that. But uh, uh, we made four mistakes in the first half just on coverages where we, we didn't talk. And we haven't been making those, Derek. And that's that's one of the things that uh, was really disappointing today and at, at halftime was just the simple – uh, communication mistakes, but you know we knew Crowig, Crowig was going to score, and, and he's a really good player, and he elevates. We were uh, we were more concerned of trying not to let him elevate his teammates, um, so we weren't as concerned with his points as we were, um, you know, him elevating. But uh, uh, again, give their guys credit; they did a great job. We'll go to Steve McGarvey from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Steve. 
just the way Loyola was kind of able to use all the shot clock and just about every possession, just how much did that wear you all down, down the stretch, and how just how frustrating was it the way they were – that pace they were playing with and how they were able to kind of use the clock there at the league, with the league? Well, we knew coming in. I mean, they, they only give up six points a game in transition. So, uh, you know, we felt like we had to get some stops to uh, uh, to, to, to be able to run. And, uh, you know, again, early, you know, that's what they do is, is you know, they grind possessions. They're one of the slower teams in the country in pace of play. And, uh, again, with, with Crutwig, it gets hard to – take anything away because he can play at the top of the key. He's got an unlimited dribble. And, uh, you know, as soon as you run stuff at him um, or somebody at him, he, he dices you with um, uh, with the pass. So, uh, you know, they're a hard guard. And, uh, you know, they've got very skilled guys who are very very well schooled in what they're doing. And um, you know, they hurt us with it today. We'll go back to Scott Ritchie from the Champaign News Gazette. Go ahead, Scott. You know, Brad, just as soon as the final buzzer went off, Io you know, made a beeline for Andre Cabello, wrapped him up, kind of helped, you know, let him off the, the court. And he was giving hugs to everybody else. Just you know, in that kind of moment, what does it say about your team where I mean, you sort of rallied around each other, even kind of in a, a tough moment? Well, that's what we've done all year. Uh, you know, Io is an unbelievable leader. Uh, you know, Io will 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 go take that next step, and deservedly so. And and uh, but but Io's done more for this program and and and, and these young guys you know Io and Ace and 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 Coleman Hawkins and and Brandon Lieb and all these guys that are going to are going to continue to build this um, you know my my hats off to Io um, he does a great great job of, of of leading and has been instrumental in this his his jersey will hang in our rafter someday but uh, um, you know in, in a day that's really tough for was tough for him. Uh, to to show that continued leadership speaks volumes to to who he is as a as a, as a young man. We'll go to Jeremy Werner from Twenty Four Seven Sports. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, Brad. Obviously, this team did things that an Illinois team hasn't done in a long time. But uh, obviously, this is a, a tough way to end it. How do you hope this team is remembered, um, especially with what happened today? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 um, it's one of the great things about March Madness is is you have an off day and you lose and and you can't lose sight of the I don't even know what our record was I you can't lose sight of that you, know, you can't you can't lose sight of the Big Ten championship you can't lose sight of the 19 games we won against Big Ten opponents uh, you can't lose sight of the growth uh, that this team made through the season but uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll remember this uh, very very fondly this group as a as a team that. Uh, uh, really continue to take the next step and uh, in our progress of, of building and uh, I think we brought Illinois back and and uh, it's been a it's been a resurrection of sorts and and uh, uh, great challenge in this team has has achieved a great deal we'll go back to Shannon Ryan from the Chicago Tribune go ahead Shannon oh my question was just asked thank you And we'll go to Brett from WCIA TV. Go ahead, Brett. Brett, is there one moment you will take away from this season, or one thing in particular that you'll always have? I realize that's difficult the circumstances right now, but how, how will you remember uh, specific things? Yeah, I mean, I, I, being able to celebrate the Big Ten championship and here in Indy uh, was 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 one of the positives. I'll also remember the unbelievable sacrifice that our our, our young people have made since June tenth. Um, man, that's hard. Uh, not seeing family, uh, the, the commitment, not having a positive test since August, uh, how hard that can be and the dedication and commitment and sacrifice. Um, that's probably what makes today even harder than the, than the loss itself was, was there was so much sacrifice and work put in. But, uh, uh, you know, we also got to celebrate some unbelievable moments and, and uh, you never forget those. All right, our last question comes from Alessandra Pontbrian. Go ahead, Alessandra. Brad, what are the thoughts running through your head right now? Hmm. Um, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a real softy and, and at heart. And, man, when you walk in and you see young people crying, and then I get really emotional anyway, and, and – uh, um, I always go there first before I think of the positives and the and the good and and uh, 
uh, you know, the game's over. We'll, we'll have plenty of time to review that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm with those guys in the locker room, and I, I, my heart aches for them. I'm, I'm, truly, uh, I'm truly sad that today wasn't our day. All right. Thank you, Coach, for your time today. Thank you. All right, we'll be joined momentarily by Ayo Dosumu. Please use the time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Oh my gosh. Oh. Do I see him? Yes, you can see him. I won't. All right, we're now joined by Dosumu. We'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Brandon Simber, we'll start with you. Go ahead, Brandon. I know defensively, what did Loyola do so well today against you guys? Um, they're a well coached team. Credit to them. Um, I, I just think they um we had a great game plan to really, you know, get after what we like to do, where we like to get the ball at. And I just think they did a, a well job there. Shannon Ryan from the Chicago Tribune. Go ahead, Shannon. Okay, thanks, Ayo. Um, can you just describe the end of the game? You were you went right over to Andre Cabello. You were giving high fives to people. What kind of message were you trying to send there? Even though I'm sure your your feelings were pretty, um, you must have been pretty disappointed. Oh, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm disappointed in the way I played. Um, I don't think I played, you know, I, didn't, I don't think I, to my standards, I don't think I played nowhere near um, how I wanted to play to help, help my team win. And um, I understand that, you know. I, I, life comes with adversity. Um, it's, not you, it's not what you do when it happens. It's what you do after it happens. Um, so I just try to tell them, you know, I told my team, keep your heads high. Heads high, you know. Um, we didn't win. We, we we wanted to win this game. You know, we didn't get it done. But at the end of the day, um, you got to take your medicine. You know, that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking my medicine. You know, all the good that's been coming this season. You know, we were at our, at our high and we played well. Even how we were feeling, we won a Big Ten championship. You know, and um, the Lord just wanted – had different plans for us now. Now it's all about taking your medicine. All right, next question from Brett from WCIA-TV. Go ahead, Brett. I know, how much do you feel like they took you out of even the adjustments you guys tried to make throughout the game? Um, I just think we didn't get in the rhythm offensively. Um, what do we shoot from the field? We're at 22. 22 for 49, yeah. We didn't really uh, – I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think we really got in a, in a rhythm how we, how we wanted to be, how we'd normally be. You know, like I said, you know, credits to them. They had a great game plan. They executed the um, game plan well. So, um, yeah, credits to them. Next question from Scott Ritchie. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, I you know, Loyola doesn't allow teams to really get out in transition that much. Just how much did that maybe hurt you guys where a lot of what you've been able to do successfully this year was pushing the tempo and, and, and getting in transition? I mean, they're just solid. They're a solid basketball team. They, you know, they're, they followed their coach's game plan and they, you know, they did a tremendous job at that. Um, at the end of the day, I think we still had good looks. We just... You know, couldn't couldn't throw the couldn't throw a penny in the ocean. So you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed, definitely. But um, like I said, it's not. It, it's all about the response. You know, what are you going to do after this? You're going to hold your head down. You're going to go going to work. You know, that's all you can do is get in the gym and work harder. You know, I have a photogenic photogenic memory of you know the feeling I felt after the game. 
And um, just going to go in the gym, get better, you know, keep praying. The sun going to shine tomorrow, you know. Um, just try to keep it positive. Try to I, when, like, when I go to times like this, I try to think of the positive, you know. It's easy to think about these last 40 minutes of how we, you know, didn't play how we wanted to play. But I try to focus on, you know, the thousands, the millions of hours with my teammates, you know, all the adversity we overcame. Um, just, you know, the, 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 good, the, the good part about it, the good side about it. But um, they did a great job getting back in transition. They're just a well-coached team. Like I said, they followed their game plan. All right, next question from Steve McGarvey from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Steve. Good morning, y'all. got the last five points of the first half, a couple of dunks from Coburn, and it seemed like y'all gotten a little bit of momentum there. What was y'all? What were y'all thinking at halftime, and why were you not able to kind of carry it over to the second half? I mean, we was thinking that was going to try to come out and win the game. You know, that's what we were thinking. We were just trying to, we were just trying to get out, and get stops, um, try to keep the game close, and try to, you know, try to win it. Next question is from Jeremy Werner from 24-7 Sports. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, Io. I know this is kind of sour end everything, but how do you hope this team uh, and, and you are remembered here at Illinois? Um, I'm hoping we remember it as, you know, you know, the guys that really help turn this program around. That's what it's all about. You know, when I came to Illinois, I came here to try to, of course, win a national championship, but my main, my main goal was to – you know, help get this program back on the map. Help get this program back as one of the national powerhouses. Um, we we didn't get it done today, but at the end of the day, you know, this, this group of guys, there's no, there's no other team I want to go to war with. Um, all season long, COVID protocols, you know, being able to play every game, um, not have any positive test. Um, I just think we sacrificed so much to get in this position, and um, I'm extremely proud of the guys, you know, Coach Underwood. Um, I definitely felt like I let my team down today. But, you know, I can take it. I can take the criticism. I can take um, – have wherever may comes, I can take it. I've been through it all. You know, it's another um, another bump on the road. And I'm um, trying to, you know, get back, get some rest. You know, we, we go get back at it. Next question is from Derek Piper from the Illini Inquirer. Go ahead, Derek. Hey, I, what made it tough to get stops defensively? What were they doing on offense that really challenged you guys? I mean, they just they run a, a good offense. They run a lot of pin downs, a lot of curls. And they have a big man who can um, facilitate and, and, and uplift his teammates. So, um, yeah. Next question is from Mike McGraw from the Daily Herald. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, what was it like uh, going up against uh, your old buddy, Lucas Williamson, today? Oh, it was nice. It was nice going, get, going up against him. Next question is from Alec Buss. Go ahead, Alec. Hey, I know there's a lot probably going through your mind, but as you take off your jersey one last time, I mean, what kind of emotions was that like for you? Um, it was definitely a, a, a hurtful feeling, but I try to take, I try to take the, the the good with the bad. You know, I definitely thought about how, you know, poorly I played today, but I try to think about all the work I put in, all the hours I put into the gym. You know, all the, the 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 last three years, the the difference we made as a as a as a, a difference I made as a player and the difference the whole program made. And um I try to just, you know, remember the good times and um and at the same time I try to, you know, be in the moment, seize the moment. You know, I always tell you I seize the moment when, when things are going well. I'm trying to seize the moment, you know, when when things go bad also. Um, so I'm just, you know, soaking it all in, remembering this feeling. You know, it's definitely not a feeling that I want to feel, but it's only going to make me stronger, you know. That's the only way you can get better is, you know, having the the ability to be able to take it, your medicine, when you don't perform how you want to perform. So, you know, the same how I'm, I'm hype how I feel about when I'm, you know, playing well, I'm making game winners or hitting daggers. It's the same how I got to take it now, you know, when I didn't play so well. So it's all about taking it. Um, getting better, trying to enjoy my teammates, keep talking to them, keep uplifting them. Because, you know, it's bigger than this one game. Um, this one game doesn't define you at all. The, all the greats have to overcome um, adversity to get to where they were at. You know, Michael Jordan um, couldn't – he lost to the Detroit Pistons in multiple years. Kobe Bryant airballed in the playoff games. You know, LeBron had to go through adversity. So all the greats 
um, have to go through adversity. So it's all about the next step, what you're going to do, you know. And uh, I'm just trying to keep my head high and just um, soak it all in. All right, next question from Alessandra Point Brand. Go. What are the thoughts running through your head right now? How uh, the thoughts? Um, right now, I'm thinking about um, how it's over. Definitely, I'm um, just, you know, it's all, it's a lot of things racing through my mind. But I'm really um, mainly thinking about all the work that we put in to get to this day. And um, now that it's over, you know, I'm not sad. Um, I'm because I, I I'm looking at it as. You know, I'm enjoying all the good times we had. You know, I'm trying to think about all the great times um, that we got together as a team, how we, we overcame adversity, you know, all the tough practices we had. Not even this year, but last year also. I'm just thinking about, you know, my whole time at Illinois and, you know, how we overcame so much to get to where we at today. You know, the score didn't show it, but I love my guys, you know. I love this program. I love everything about it. Um, so I'm just thinking about just trying to trying to enjoy everything and try to just remember the good times. All right, for our last question, we'll go back to Scott Ritchie. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, uh, uh, we've talked a lot about kind of the, the side of Brad Underwood that, that pushes you guys and gets after you guys. And you know, we saw maybe the other side you know, a few minutes ago where you know, he's feeling for this team. Just how much does that – maybe mean to you and the, the team just where, you know, you know the, the coaches kind of have your back oh, in any instance. Oh, man, the coaches, I always knew Coach Underwood had my back. You know, I definitely want to give a shout-out to Coach Underwood because no matter what, through the ups and the downs, he always been there for us. So um, I definitely, you know, want to shout-out to Coach Underwood. He know I love him dearly. I know he loves us dearly. And um, we didn't get it done. You know, we didn't play how we need to play to win a game. Mm. And now it's about taking our medicine. And I um, also, you know, want to thank, you know, shout out all the media who covered me and covered this team for my last three years. Um, it's been a great, you know, a great ride, a great journey. Um, you know, we didn't get it done. Um, we definitely had bigger aspirations of, um, you know, winning the national championship, trying to, you know, get to a Final Four, cut down some more nets. But um, God had other plans. But um, I definitely want to, you know, thank the media for you know, being there with being with us, you know, being there with me in my whole journey. And um it's been a great time, you know, doing media with you guys. So just thank you guys for that. All right. Thank you, Io, for your time today. Thank you. All right, that's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.